Tuna, Ghanaians love them. Not only do they serve as a great source of protein, but contribute an impressive $350 million to the nation's economy and provide jobs to 20,000 Ghanaians directly and indirectly. In an era where the president is proposing ways to revive the agricultural sector to encourage import substitution as a developmental agenda, fishers within the tuna industry are crying out that an increase in their license fee by government could result in the death of their industry. Explaining their pains, Richester Amafio, the secretary of the Ghana Tuna Association, says the drastic increase of the license fee has been destructive to the industry. $35 per GLT per annum means that GLT means gross register tonnage, which is the weight of your vessel. So if your vessel is $1,000 and you pay $35 per GLT, you are paying that you pay $35,000. The perception that was created was that we pay only $35. And so the ministry increased the $35 to $200. And we received that letter on 31st December at around 3 p.m. when our licenses were expiring at 12 midnight that day. So we had just our seven hours to mobilize and go and pay an increment of 471%. We raised this issue, we wrote numbers of letters. The president invited us over for a discussion. We went there, the president appreciated our issues. One of the reasons the ministry assigned was that we were paying the least in the sub-region. But we have provided adequate evidence to prove that even at $35, we are paying so much. Because Senegal, for instance, we just started. They are paying about $14 per GLT for flag vessels. In nominal terms, we gross in some 350 to 400 million US dollars annually from tuna alone. The tuna industry is a vast and diverse one. Some of the key players within the value chain are fishmongers who are predominantly women. These women receive the tuna from vessels and distribute them to tuna sellers across the country who are also women. Me a fishmonger. Me mommy, no yes, say do my way. Me mommy, a one bath three. Yeah, two boys and a one girl. As I say, me a busy entino. Me be far, me mommy, no do my no. And I me continue. Na time I am mommy, mo yeno. Na e ye do my papa. Because me me mommy, or she me go school. Me go school, I go school or UK. Me me chiba, I go school or Spain. Me mommy, only do my be and care do my way. Who say? And I'm one no tone. On a muton in tons, a muton in a large quantity, not in small quantity, but in tons. No, 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 but say, see, I a dear year who said, I make her say, bear say, three years, and now four years, a juman who form one echo. Circumstances surrounding the job, no, and my a juman, and yet a juma echo through you. Nina, a coffo this year. Like ten of the vessels, I want me and two vessels may be support. I want me and two because of increment of um, license. Into I want me and two. Now yes, I'm sure. A juma no enkoso because ye nim say in Kano Ghana. A dia ni boy ye for buy a fish, but now fish is more expensive than chicken. Joseph K Kujoji a veteran tuna merchant and one of the few Ghanaians within the sector who can boast of once owning and operating his own vessels, says the tuna industry was not always this challenging. First, the resources were there, and also the government was helping because they knew that it's a, a very, uh, very risky uh, uh, industry. The banks were shining away. But because of all these uh, mitigation uh, uh, packages from the government of the day, fishing uh, was very uh, lucrative. During the high point of my business, where I was employing 105 Ghanaians and expatriates with a fleet of about five fish, fishing vessels. Recently, while presenting its manifesto to the nation, the NPP administration outlined its plans to revive the poultry industry. Ironically, the tuna industry, which is Ghana's biggest supplier of protein exports, fears facing the same fate as the poultry sector if government does not lower their licensing fee.
the fishmongers cry that the death of the industry will not only affect the vessel owners and the mongers themselves, but all 20,000 Ghanaians who rely directly and indirectly on tuna production. The people who do the rapping are basically young men who without jobs would have been a problem to the society because they are quite energetic. Even on days when there's no fish and they come around, the kind of noise, fighting, squabbles that they engage in, you can imagine if they didn't have any regular source of income, the kind of problem they will cause to society. And all these people also have families they are taking care of. The people I employ, I have most, most of my employees are all widows, single parents with families. And it is this they have done over the years to educate their children. So any attempt you know, to bring the tuna industry down will be catastrophic. Not only to the ordinary tuna customer who buys directly from the producers, but to the middle men or middle women who do the conveying from Tema to the various markets in Ghana. And it's a chain. It's a whole chain. And we cannot even count the people involved. Tuna is Ghana's biggest seafood export. It contributes significantly to the fisheries sector. Tuna merchants and mongers fear that government's failure to decrease their license fee will lead to the downfall of the industry. It will just collapse, just like how it collapsed off uh, what, uh, the seas of uh, uh, Canada. It's, it's natural. They will just collapse and they will not have the, what, the resources. And then it will take a long time, just like a forest. You have a virgin forest. If you clear it and of all those uh, ecosystems and all that, it will take a long time for it to, I mean, to be forested.